to Inside Boxing's Throwdown. My name is Steve Johnson, my co-host of Radio Martinez. On radio last night, we had some pretty good fights at the uh, Madison Square Garden Arena uh, Theater. Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, yep. Up there in New York, New York. And um, it was highlighted at the main event as uh, um, uh, Amir Imam taking on Jose Ramirez um, in a bout, in a junior, junior welterweight bout. Okay, we say light welterweight. Um, by about that was uh, pretty much with the the way that I thought it would go. I had to say that I thought Imam was was not an easy out, but that Ramirez would, would get a hold of him, and that's what happened. What was your opinion on that first fight? That well, the main event. We'll go. To the well, yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, well, actually, I was surprised. Yeah. I, I was surprised because I really thought uh, Jose Ramirez would uh, would. Uh, would win this fight, not so much dominating, but I, I, I felt he would he would come in and win the fight. I felt he was the better fighter. Don't forget, he might have lost to uh, uh, Adrian Granados mm -hmm. uh, in his last, well, his loss that he had. His only loss. Yeah. And um, uh, I just figured uh, uh, Jose uh, is, is that type of good fighter that he would come in and, and actually um, take control of the fight and actually win the fight. But uh, it wasn't that way, man. I'm telling you, Iman came in. Uh, he was on a mission. He fought well. Uh, Stevie had he had the right game plan. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he established his jab. He was jabbing. He was, but he just could not keep uh, Ramirez off of him. I mean, uh, Ramirez was on a mission, man. Yeah, he was on a mission. He was on a mission, and uh, and it just wasn't. Uh, you can see it was just a matter of time before uh, he would wear. Uh, wear uh, Iman, Iman down, and, and not so much wear him down, but break him down, you know, mentally, break him down. Like, yeah. you know, a fighter has to get a little frustrated when you're when you're fighting well, when you're making time contact, and when you're scoring well, and when you just can't stop uh, your opponent from, from coming in, coming in, coming in. And then, you know, toward the second half of the fight, man, I'll tell you, Ramirez was landing some, some devastating blows, <laughs> I'm telling you. It was, but I like Iman. He rolls with his punches. You know, he rolls with his punch as well. He doesn't take the blunt of the punch. He doesn't take the force of the punch, which helped him considerably last night. So I would agree. I, I think that we have a slight advantage over most of our of our uh, viewers in that we got a chance to see Jose Ramirez four different times. He's about four Colorado boxers. Oh yeah, he on has his, on his rise to the top. So we knew a little bit more about him. But I think the the appropriate word for him is that he's just relentless. You know, he reminds me a lot of uh, of uh, Benavides, David Benavides, where mm -hmm, they just mm -hmm. they just they're just coming. They're just like little machines, and if you can't keep them off of you, hey, you know what the result's gonna be. There's no you denying know? them fighters. But fighters, I, fighters like that, you just they, they're just no denying them. It's in it's in their mindset. They, well, I, and I have to mention one thing. You know that Imam and uh, Ramirez. It was one of the backdrops to this whole thing was that it would probably be the last time we'll get to see Bob Arum and Don King go head to head with two of their fighters. And I think ESPN did a good job of, uh, of um, interviewing the two of them, having a sit down, you know, and, and talking about their careers. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, that, that was a nice touch because you and I know we have a lot of people out there that still say, you know, Don King is scum and they say Bob Aram is scum. It's boxing. It's the business of boxing. And these two are the, two are the best that ever did it. My, my man can cut conversation in the middle and jump into the other one. Well, I have to. Because <laughs> I have to because that was, the part of the, that was part of the main event. That was part of the main well, event. Well, it was, and that's a nice topic to talk about, but we, we are, we're not done talking about the Ramirez fight, man. I'm Here done. we are. What you else are you going to say? <laughs> Tell me what else you're going to say. He, man, he won the fight. Okay. Ramirez won the fight. He won the fight okay. in, in, uh, in great fashion. Okay. You know, he, uh, he was on a mission. Let me just finish this up, man. Okay. This guy gonna jump. Okay, no. so we'll talk about Don King a little bit, and this guy be over there in no. uh, American Furniture Warehouse. I just don't know what else you have to say. <laughs> you said he dominated and won the fight. But Keep going. But Go anyway, on. you know, the action was great. The action was great. He he's the real deal. He's someone that's gonna have to be dealt with, and I'm telling you, uh, Ramirez is gonna hold on to that championship for for quite some time now. This it's gonna take it's gonna take. A lot to take that from him. Yeah, and wasn't that at 140 pounds? Yes. Okay. Uh, Lomachenko, you want some Lomachenko of this? Lomachenko wants none of that. You want some of this? You want to come up to and wait to come to this? Mikey Garcia, you want some of this? Nope. I mean, uh, not a lot of people are going to be calling his name out. That's the truth. Not, okay. not a lot of people are going to be calling his name out. So, so uh, 
given that it's a great fight. Some someone you want to keep keep an eye out, and uh, you're you're gonna see him on them big pay per view statuses real quick because uh, unless nobody steps up to the plate to fight him and challenge him for that belt. Okay. So okay. Can, I, can I move on? Now? So, okay. So now okay. move on. Now. Okay. now you want to talk about? Thank you. The, uh, I want to talk uh, about the light heavyweight uh, bout where we had Alexander uh, um, uh, Vazdik, where yep. he took on Medi Amar. I thought you know for that light heavyweight title, but I think that went like we thought it would go. I thought Vazdik would win the fight, but interesting, I found out afterwards where he said. I want the winner of Adonis Stevenson and Bobby Jack. That was interesting that he said that. So it seems to me that he already mm. figured that he was going to take care of Amar and he wants the winner of that. I don't know if he wants to, really wants the winner of that because I expect Badu Jack to win that fight. I know you probably might think different, but I think Badu Jack, and Badu Jack is another one. That's a tough out, man. But let me say this. The light heavyweight division right now is pretty tough. You know, it's it's pretty tough. The competition there is, is pretty well, tough. Well, well, good. Let us know, because I'll be honest. I, I haven't followed the light heavyweight. Division. Well, we got a lot no. going in the light heavyweight, and, and you remember we still got the boys that were over in the WBSS, the World yep. Boxing yep. Super Series. You, I know you you yep. can't forget forgetting that action over there, but there's all the guys in there that have to be dealt with. Oh, okay. And then we have our, our boy, I have to say, you know, he's coming along slowly. They're really going slow, but my boy Stephen Nelson from, from Omaha. You know, he's light heavyweight, but he's he's at the bottom, but he's working his way up. Oh, the light heavyweight division is pretty stacked. And Steven Nelson will, will be a, a contender, yes. without a doubt. I mean, he's he's got the talent, he's got the skills. Um, so he will be up there, and it won't take him long. Okay. It won't take him long. Well, we got a little bit of time left. We're good. We're going to get this whole card in the meeting. But let me yeah. ask you that in one of the undercard fights, we have Mike Conlon, you know, um, from Ireland, uh, you know, and that. I don't know. You know, Mike Conlon. It's, it's 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 really it's really sad that you know you, you take uh, 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 St. Patrick's Day, uh, a big holiday, uh, uh, to celebrate it all across this country and all pretty much all, all over the place, and it's it's great. And you put a guy like like that that everyone is waiting to see what he can do in Conlon because of course you remember he made his fame in the Olympics. When he flipped off all the uh, the Olympic Committee and the USA Boxing and everybody else that's involved with amateur boxing, because uh, he well, I wouldn't go as say he made his fame there. He's well, that's where everybody knows him. That, I mean, that's where that's where all the pro fans got to know who he was because that was the topic of uh, conversation for true. a long time. But he's a gold medalist, and okay. uh, and but but the bottom line to me, you know, I'm I'm the, I saw him as a crybaby. Okay, uh, so and, and <laughs> from I'm, the Olympics and, and, and yeah, well, well, because you know, hey, it's a, it's enough to be frustrated and stuff, but you knew going in what was going to happen. You know, the, the politics of boxing is, is is ugly. It's ugly. But the radio, that okay. was his point going in: is watch what happens, and we all saw exactly what happened. What he said was it, right. exactly, and no one's going to make you a crybaby because he, he it was after the fact, after he was out of that. Uh, arena and that status, he carried it on, crying and crying because. The, and wasn't he right? We found out now that Aiba, that you know, over in the Olympics, that. Well, yeah, no, that, that it was corrupt. That's that's I what mean, I'm saying. The politics of, of 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 if you think the politics in professional boxing is bad, you watch the politics in that uh, uh, amateur part. Okay? I agree. So what I'm saying is, okay, now he turned pro. Okay, so now prove to the world that you're somebody, you know. And I'm not gonna say it's all his fault because you know it's it's his handlers and his promoters that Bob are. Bob was very he's handling with kid gloves. And then, well, I don't know. It's okay to handle a prospect and bring him up that, but why do you waste TV time on it? Why do you waste TV time and showing that kind of stuff? A guy that comes into the ring and don't want to fight, and, and all his fights have been typically that type of fight. He he hasn't fought anyone that that. Really contest him or, or 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 escalate him up into the into the uh, top caliber fighters, and I mean obviously he has the talent. He's proven that uh, uh, as an amateur, uh, but they hold him back. Well, let me say this: I will agree with you. We only have a couple of seconds left, but I will agree with you on this. Handling Mike Collin the same way you handle a Shakur Stevenson is ridiculous. Shakur, yeah. is, Shakur is a young kid that just got into that slot yes. and made the most of it. Conlon has is, is got hundreds of amateur uh, bouts. There's no need to handle him with kid gloves. Exactly. You know? He's supposed to get in there and let's see what he's got. But 
Bob Arum, you know, he does things his way, so I guess we'll have to roll with it. And, of course, you know, Bob Arum knows how to make money, and Bob Arum's thinking about the revenue for top rank. Hey, Ireland, you saw how many people came here last night from... From, from Northern Ireland just to see him blow out a guy that we knew he was going to blow out. And that's fine. I mean, we all know what's going to happen. So why why the TV time? I agree. Why, why the, the national TV time? And, you know, you, I mean, you got you to gotta actually blame the networks too, ESPN. Why would they, why would they approve something like that to go over to Airways? Well, Bob Aaron was going to yeah. take, take control of well, that. But anyway. But look, just real quick, let me say this, in ending this segment. Um, there's no way that... Mike Conlon, a hero of Northern Ireland, on St. Paddy's Day, should be fighting in the United States. I just don't get that. Bob Aaron, why wouldn't he put him on his main event over in Northern Ireland, sell out the place over there? We good know point. he can do that. Good point. Yes. Why would you have him on an undercard here against a bum? Yeah, you know? good point. It just makes no sense. That's a good point. That's right. a good point. So anyway, that's the end of our first segment. Our second segment, we'll come back and, and we'll uh, uh, talk a little bit about next week's fights. Well, there's only one fight, and that's going to be a good one over in England. Okay. Heavyweight bout. But we'll talk about that when we come back. Okay. Okay.